Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today's, today's session on how great customer journeys drive success. In today's webinar, we're going to talk about the importance of the interactions your business has with customers during their journey with you and get a sense of what best practices drive success for both your customer and your business. I'd like to start by introducing myself and our guest speaker today. My name is Hamza Tariq, and I'm a marketing manager at Kayako. I'll be your host for today's webinar. With me today is Eric Ezeps, customer success champion and founder and CEO at CSM Practice. Hello, Eric, and welcome. Hey, We're hi, very, Hamza. Hi, everyone. We're very excited to have you with us today, Eric. Uh, could you tell everyone a little bit about your background, please? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So I've been in customer success since um, 2013 when I joined a customer success software company. And in 2014, I've actually started my own consulting firm, been a management consultant for many years before that. And I would say these, to, these days, uh, we work with many companies on not only setting up the right strategy for customer success to getting results like reducing churn, increasing adoption, uh, improving their uh, advocacy numbers, but we also specialize in applying technology to scale those operations. Fantastic, thank you. So we have a great session plan for all of you, but before we kick things off, I'd like to tell everyone a little bit about Kayako. Um, Kayako is designed around the unified customer service experience which means we bring all your customer interactions across multiple channels onto a single platform and single thread. Our goal is to help you grow your business through better and more meaningful customer interactions and have every interaction you have with a customer at your fingertips. Uh, we currently have over 131,000 professionals that use Kayako and they use it to support millions of customers across industries. So before we start, uh, I want to remind everyone that you can go ahead and submit questions at any time during the webinar. Um, please remember, you can go ahead and click the Q&A button in your Zoom webinar control panel and type in the question and just hit send. We'll be taking questions during the webinar and I have also set aside um, 10 minutes at the end of the session to answer any questions we aren't able to get to. So I'd like to just quickly go over what we'll be covering uh, in today's session. Uh, we'll be talking about how quality interactions during your customer's journey with you can help drive success for both you and your customer. Um, we'll start the session by asking you for a clear definition of what customer success really is. Um, moving forward, uh, I'd like to hear from Irit who owns customer success in the overall customer journey and the importance of departments and teams being aligned collaborating and sharing knowledge to better service the customer. And um, uh, of course, the importance of having knowledge of each customer interaction at your fingertips. So before we move forward, I'd like to get a sense of who's joined us to, today. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and conduct a quick poll to see who's in our audience. And uh, we just want to go ahead and launch the poll now, and if everyone could just go ahead and select the, the option that's relevant to them, we get an idea of where they're joined by customer service and support professionals, whether most of the people with us have customer success and renewal support, so different marketing and sales teams or product and development teams. So we just want to wait until we receive about 80% of the votes, and I'm going to go ahead and then share the results. There we go. We have mostly customer success in renewals, folks. Awesome. Okay. So let me go ahead and without further delay, let's get started with a few questions. So many people ask what customer success is and whether customer service and support teams are already doing the same thing. I'd like to get everyone on the same page by asking for what is customer success? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> For some reason, I get to ask, uh, being asked that a lot. Um, customer success has been a, for, you know, in, in the 
uh, businesses for a while. And I think the critical point was when companies started to embrace subscription-based solution and when SaaS started to emerge. Look, when we only had on-premise uh, software solutions, there was, uh, you know, we had the account managers that took care of the accounts. They um, owned the book of business. Their role was to develop the relationships within the account, but um, they were measured against how well they were able to forecast their account plans and, um, you, you know, being used to forecast revenues with the existing accounts. So they would essentially be sort of like the, the farmers, um, identify opportunities for expansions and things of that nature. And then the support team would take care of the product issues and take a look at how we can solve technical issues. Whereas, you know, uh, sometimes <laughs> if we had billing issues that they would call support as well. But they were like the first in line to address any kind of customer situations and um, really look into uh, being very reactive to customer demands. Uh, we also have like other groups that uh, can handle onboarding and implementations and complex features. But in today's world, if we look at uh, what is happening since SaaS emerged, we have a much more proactive uh, journey with our customers and the customer success team has filled up the gap where you know if before before no one was ever responsible for what business outcomes the customer is getting out of your solution no one, can you can you switch to the previous slide please sure, no one sure. was uh, responsible to prove value mm -hmm. to customers no one was responsible for making sure we know what are uh, the strategic goals of the customers we were basically maybe documented in the sales process what they initially, why they initially bought from us if we were lucky and the salesperson was really good at like writing up that stuff. But nobody in the organization was proactively looking to ensure that the subscription continues. But in the SaaS world, in a subscription model, the customer has all the power. They can at any point you know, finish the agreement and say, look, this is, we don't see value anymore, or you became a commodity because now all your competitors are offering the same single solution and they're, they're going to churn. They're going to take their business somewhere else. So that's what customer success management is all about. It's about partnering with our clients to drive business outcomes and maximize value as a result. Um, and then, the outcome of that is increased net retention, advocacy, and expansions. Got it, thank you. So I've, I've heard many people say that the customer journey starts when a customer makes a purchase, but there's a strong argument that the customer journey begins long before a purchase is made. I'd like to ask you, Rick, um, when exactly does the customer journey start and who <laughs> should own customer success. Okay, so the reality is, is that everyone should own the success of our customers as an organization. And the customer journey starts from the moment they reach your website. And mm -hmm. I'll, I'll give you an example. I had, um, a, a, when I started my career, I had one of my clients um, and their pay-per-click campaigns that the marketing team initiated did not align with the core competency of the product. And they had a freemium to premium approach. And lo and behold, they had over 50% <laughs> churn rate um, wow. and certainly very low conversion rates. And so we definitely all reliant on one another in the organization to produce what we call success for our customers. Mm -hmm. However, at the heart of it, uh, what has emerged is this role that's called customer success. And the role of the customer success manager typically begins after there was a financial transaction in the organization, meaning mm -hmm. the customer has already bought into the product. That's where the customer success manager's position starts to own the customer. And before that, we have other team members that um, take ownership of that. 
Um, what we see in recent trends is that customer success is no longer the, res the sole responsibility of the customer success manager. It is an organization-wide initiative. And I added the slide to show not only how the customer success management team can uh, help other departments, but how other departments can drive the success of the customer throughout their interactions with us. So there's multiple touch points of the customer throughout their life cycle, throughout their journey, and everyone that's customer facing is, can contribute to the overall success of our customers. Got it. So most of us have heard the importance of understanding customer goals. Um, I read a quote not too long ago by Gene Bliss, CEO of Customer Bliss, which was that we, we need to understand customer goals to achieve our goals. So um, how does one understand these goals and how important is customer data and insight to driving success for each customer? Okay, so I feel like these are two separate questions, but I'll answer both. So let's start with data. <clears throat> the data is absolutely key. And it's key, um, if you want to skip to the next slide, it's key because, you know, we want to apply as much as possible data-driven playbooks. And those are key because it allows us to be proactive and serving the right experience to the right customer at the right time. For those of you who are in the audience and have uh, thousands of users or thousands of accounts that you need to handle, and you're not a, a huge organization yet, uh, meaning you don't have a lot of team members that can handle, you can't throw bodies at the issue, you're going to mm -hmm. want to start looking at how much data can you collect about the customer. And in terms of best practices, I threw in some examples of data elements that you want to know about each and every customer. What are their support trends? What did account management do with them lately? How, you know, when is their next renewal? If they have multiple contracts, what, what are all the next renewals that are coming up? What is the collective renewal amount for this year? Oh, what did sales capture during the sales cycle? And are they engaged with them now for some reason for another line of business? What did professional mm -hmm. services do with them? What was the first value that was delivered during onboarding? What are the blogs that they're looking on your website? What kind of training have they taken, free or paid? Have they opted for paid training? Have they opted for it and taken it? <laughs> uh, are there any online, if you have an online community, are they participating? Who is participating? Um, if you're offering live webinars to your clients, you want to know who's, what kind of webinars are they participating in? If those are the webinars related to new features or additional use cases that they have not implemented yet, that's a great way to just go ahead and reach out to the, the client and say, hey, we noticed you attended the webinar about XYZ. We wanted to follow up with you to see what you thought about it, if this was an interesting use case for you, and can we partner with you to make sure that you're able to get the value out of that additional use case. So there's a ton of different interactions that your customer has with you that most of the time we don't really collect into one central place. But if we did, we could have so much power in our hands to drive uh, playbooks based on specific data points. And if you can have that in real time, all the power to you. Now you asked me another question, which was how do we know what are the goals of the customer with us? <laughs> and how can we capture that? Uh, look, at, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it really depends on the customer. There's, so there's two methodologies to capture that in very high level approach. One is um, there's two ty types of engagement models we can have with customer, high touch and low touch or tech touch. So when we have large accounts, um, you know, maybe like, depends on your organization, but it's not going to be, you know, 5K a year. It's going to be a lot more. Um, so when we have high touch and strategic accounts, we will most likely have a customer journey and lifecycle playbooks that call out for frequent touch points with the client. And so most likely, if we have the rally tools in place, we will capture the, the desired business outcomes, as Lincoln Murphy likes to call it. Um, that the client is 
has a high priority for at every given period. And we should have these continuous touch points with the client to verify if those has cha have changed during time. For tech touch clients, meaning when you have a B2C organization or it is a B2B but acts like B2C, uh, mm -hmm. we are definitely reliant on capturing uh, meaningful engagements on our website, on our web platform, on our blogs, our webinars, as well as serve surveys and in-app messages to see what, based on engagement with the client, what, are, what might they be looking for uh, in terms of to do. It would be extremely important to capture attributes of users and customers in general throughout their life cycle so that we can be very intelligent around uh, serving automated data-driven playbooks such as email campaigns and suggestions for live webinars and training, et cetera, that would be relevant to clients that we don't really have any personal interaction with or have very little of that. Thank you. So I'd like to take a moment to conduct another poll by getting an idea of how many uh, of our attendees are tracking customer touch points throughout their journey with, with, with their business. So i um, just going to go ahead and launch the poll. Yeah, that's super interesting because, you know, it's such a key element to understanding uh, where customers are. So I'm particularly curious to see how many in the audience are actually tracking uh, some of the points or all of the points. I mean, tracking all the points would be fantastic. I'd be shocked if anybody said yes, but it would be kind of cool if anybody it did. Would be, it would be awesome. But so let's see what they're saying. We have about close to 60% of the results coming in. So when we hit across 80%, I'm going to go ahead and share the results that we have. It's interesting uh, what we're seeing right now. So, okay, so almost there. Cool. So we had about 86% of the audience vote no. So lots of people are not are not tracking touch points at the moment. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, it's, not, it's not an easy thing to do if you think about it because we're using so many systems and we have so many platforms where we could capture those touch points um, and it really depends on whether you interpret a touch point as a as something that you personally do as a customer success manager or a mm -hmm. touch point meaning a customer engagement whether it's with a person or not absolutely so uh, we talked about the customer journey, uh, we talked about customer interactions. So um, since we have Eric in the room, I, I'd like to move on to some questions on customer success. So uh, Eric, we're just going to go ahead with some questions on customer success now. So, Awesome. Yeah. Bring it. <laughs> excellent. So over the years, uh, what best practices have you observed that help customers achieve their goals and succeed with a service or product? Yeah, you know, I see a lot of organizations, startups, as well as very large enterprise companies decide to embrace customer success. And unfortunately, sometimes it's a little bit of a hit and miss because we tend to guess a lot of things or we do things the first time around based on our gut feeling or what we read from blogs. <laughs> For some reason, we have all these challenges that happen to us. And the customer success, even though it's set up, does not drive churn down as much as we expected. It does not drive net retention up as, as fast as we expected. Um, we throw a lot of bodies into the solution and it's not as efficient and it costs us a lot of money. And unfortunately, you know, I see all these quote unquote mistakes that are happening um, when co companies do launch customer success organizations and they're not seeing the results that they need. And then they, they do either two things. They either fire the, the executive of customer success and get a new one. Hopefully the other one would guess it right. Or they would um, basically eliminate the customer success team altogether, which I think is a real shame. So what I want to do is I want to show you an interact iterative approach to launching 
any customer, any major customer success initiative you might have. And so I, I saw this a very similar, actually, um, a chart, and I was very inspired uh, by it. It was from the toolkit of the Center of International Tropical Arch Arch Agriculture, if you can believe it. But I thought to myself, yeah, you know, we do that with agriculture, but we could do something very similar with customer success. And when I think about my own companies that I've worked with, this is very much what works really well in terms of setting up the expectations with the board of directors and your executive team, as well as just making sure that what you're doing works. So let me go through with you. Uh, let me go through it with you real quick so that you understand the steps that are required here. So the first thing that you want to do is use the collective knowledge you already have in your organization around what makes our best customers the best. We have to understand the existing customer base. If we have too many quote unquote of them, or we don't really know because we're new to the organization, you may need to do a little bit more digging. Meaning, you may want to use predictive analytics, you may want to do some surveys, you may want to do customer interviews, but you have to understand, first of all, what works and what doesn't to your, uh, for your customers, and you want to validate it a little bit besides just the gut feeling. So, now that we understand what best customers do, we want to define our goals for customer success based on what we know works. So when we define the goals for just the initial launch, those should be done in a meaningful, reasonable, time-bound way. So we call those smart goals. <laughs> um, and then we, we, as we define the playbooks that we want to have the customer success team do or other, te other teams uh, play, we want to design them in a way that's very much related to each and every one of those goals that we've defined. So don't just adopt playbooks because somebody said you need to do a QBR. Adopt playbooks with a very clear understanding of how it's going to help you achieve a certain goal. The second thing that I recommend doing is create team templates. So many executives skip this state. Uh, this is very important. It's important to scale. It's important to create a consistent experience. And it's important to do your A-B testing, meaning you're going to next, you're going to run the playbook. You're going to monitor the impact. And ideally, when you run the playbook, you want to run it by a specific region or a cohort of clients. You don't want to run it for all of your customers. So you can say to management, look, we ran it on a specific group of customers and see, here's the results that we see. So if your playbook is consistent, your template is consistent, and you've done your A-B testing, you can show and prove the impact. And by the way, when you review it with the rest of the team, you can show the impact and get the budget that you need in order to then systemize and scale your operations. So that green dot, when you know that stuff works, that's when you want to start putting it into a system. That's when you want to start investing in technology. How many times have I seen companies decide to invest in customer success and the first thing that they do is purchase technology and they don't even put enough time to define the playbooks and the templates. That's wrong. If something did not work for you in the past, it's because you, you rely too much on the technology. The technology is a vessel into which you need to put in your own strategy and thoughts around what works. So if you've never tried it before, how would you know how to be successful with that vessel, with that software? For the things that, uh, whatever works, what you wanna do is then prove the value, meaning you wanna get back to the client and showcase and think about how do you uh, define success indicators with the client and work with them so that they can prove value up and you can prove value to other customers as well as other team members that have not adopted those playbooks yet. Sounds great. Thank you for that. So I just want to um, get a sense of how a lot of customers that are, are that, at least a lot of our customers that are startups and growing businesses, um, what advice would you have for such businesses that have cross-functional teams and do not necessarily have a customer success manager? 
Right. So, you know, the steps in launching a customer success organization is, uh, like I said, it's probably more of a multi-phase reiterative approach. I've recently written an ebook based on a talk track that I had, a breakout session that I had with um, one of our clients at TSW conference uh, this last month. And um, if you switch over to the next slide, I've actually included a way to download it really quickly. This would walk you through the main types of three challenges that we typically see in customer in organizations that try to launch a customer success organization, a customer success practice, and how to avoid them. So we've included checklists uh, that you can follow to avoid typical challenges that we see within the customer success team. Um, you know, having a hard time adopting new playbooks how to avoid challenges internally. When you add this new team, some teams would say, well, I'm already doing the renewals or I'm already doing expansion and you need to start figuring out how to work with these other cross-functional teams. And so this, this ebook is actually a great guide for any executive to start following step-by-step -step instructions and, and get a little bit more aware of some of the issues that we typically see when companies launch customer success teams and uh, maybe skip a few of the steps <laughs> with the, where the checklist recommends. So I think it's a great guide and uh, I could do a whole webinar about that. So I decided to just <laughs> add the link to the guide here in case you wanted to download it. I think it's the best way to answer that question. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. So this is our uh, final poll for the webinar. We uh, understand the importance of documenting customer interactions with one's business, but uh, are any of you in our, in, in our audience using a single platform to capture your customer's journey with your business? So if you could just go ahead and uh, select the option that, that applies to you and we'll share the results as they come in. So we're almost at the 80% mark. We'll go ahead and share this with everyone once all the all the results are in. Okay, perfect. So we have about sixty yeah, sixty seven percent of people said no, it's not at the moment. So thank you for that. And moving on to our next question. So uh, here, just like in, uh, in, in other disciplines, asking the right question at the right time can make a big difference. And, and understanding one's customer is extremely important. So specific to SaaS companies, what questions should one ask their customer during onboarding? Yeah, great. So um, I want to address this question in two parts. The first one is, what type of topics should you definitely uncover during onboarding? And the second one is what kind of questions should you typically ask, but companies don't ask it enough. So if you move on to the next slide, the look, we have two goals. The first goal is to get a better alignment on what the heck is the first value delivered should be and to prove value ASAP. Unfortunately, sometimes the salesperson is going to capture this for you, all these different elements, and sometimes they don't. Uh, I think someone just asked me, uh, Guy Nadivi, how do I feel about professional services team reporting to customer success in order to be more responsive to various issues that customer success uncovers during QBRs? But Guy, in all honesty, professional services, if they own onboarding as well, and I'll address the other question, but when, when professional services are part of customer success, we can align professional services with customer success in general and drive the success of customers by having the professional success, uh, sorry, the professional services team not just delivered on the, the SOW, not just delivered on the statement of work and the scope, but actually serve as another step where we probe around you know, double checking what or validating what our understanding of their current situation, of their challenges, of what is the impact of those challenges to their organization, to the executive, and reaffirm what are the priorities. Okay, because things might change, but from the moment 
the, de the deal is signed to the moment they start working with you. Um, and then really get an understanding of what is the ideal solution. Some of your customers are going to have a proof of concept. Some of them are not. Some of, the, are, some of them are going to get a canned demo, and some of them are going to get a tailored demo. In any event, what a great opportunity before we start onboarding to really agree on first value delivered. And if we need to make some slight changes in the first value delivered or how we position the first value delivered, what a great opportunity. And by the way, the critical bullet point here is success indicators. So even if you throw everything I said back in the garbage and you stick to the SOW because you have to, I get it. Let's at least have a slide to align you and allow to an open discussion around what are the success indicators for delivering that first value? How are they going to measure success? How are they going to say that this, there was a value? Ask your clients, what is the impact that they are expecting after you launch this thing for them? And then, so if you go to the next slide, I want to talk about, you know, how do we create customer accountability to just assess their readiness. So a lot of time we start the professional services team with the onboarding and the customer doesn't give you enough resources to really uh, allow you to be successful. So we wanna assess a couple of things. First of all, we wanna make sure that they have clear vision and clear understanding of what the business outcomes are going to be, not just for the first value delivered, but also what are they going to do by the end of year one and how are they, um, what reasonable success metrics and milestone should we define for year one? I think this is, waiting for this conversation to happen after the onboarding phase is a little too late. And that's why I typically recommend that professional services and customer success team work jointly, even during the onboarding process. And while the professional success team can implement the initial SOW, the customer success team works on defining the business outcomes and make sure that leadership is actually ready to lead your implementation process successfully. We have the decision maker authority involved during the onboarding process and the key stakeholders defined to drive action and strategy regarding the onboarding. Because hey, if you're gonna install a new system, some processes are gonna be changed. And so you need the stakeholders involvement in order to make those processes changes and make sure that change management is actually effective during that process. Got it, thank you. So um, there, there are many teams and departments that interact with a customer uh, along their journey. How does one measure the impact of what they do? And what are some of the metrics businesses should be tracking to measure success? Okay, so I'm, what I'm gonna show you is how um, a very effective way to measure whether your customer success organization is being effective. If you could switch to the next slide, please. Um, so this was uh, inspired by a fireside chat I had with Greg Tate, VP Customer Success at Salesforce, about balancing customer success automation. And one of the ways, so I sort of like reinterpreted the metrics that they track and share it here with you um, to just make sure that your customer success initiatives are effective you want to track whether what is the trend like for total customer value or uh, con, you know total contract value what is the client engagement you know Tariq we talked about tracking client engagement in your web pages in you know with mm -hmm. your your blogs with your support tickets and that's something that you know, your company does really well. And I think that's a great indication of whether clients are on track to be successful and if, are you serving them the right level of engagement? And then, you know, is there a growth in renewal rates? Is there a change in early warning signs? So ideally you would have set up early warning system and you want to see a change to the better in less and less early warning signs because if you, you use that system properly, you didn't just use it to be reactive when customers having issues, but overall watch the trends and where are the risk areas and then come up with risk mitigation strategies to lower the amount of customers that are experiencing these issues. And so the list goes on and you can read it or take a screenshot, share it with others. But this is what I would recommend 
companies to start tracking to just gauge whether or not your customer success program works versus, you know, net retention, churn rate. I mean, I do have renewal rate here, but it's just part of a bigger list of right. some leading indicators. So what can businesses do to increase customer success return on investment? Yeah, um, great question. Um, if you can switch over to the next slide, I think you know the the main point that I want to make here. Uh, you know, there's no magic wand or anything like that, but I want you to think about this because this is critical. A lot of times, organizations that that do have customer success teams still leave money on the table, and so to maximize value, meaning maximizing ROI from your client base, you have to think about. Uh, not being so reactive and, and create success plans based on what clients want to do with you. So a lot of times we think, oh, we'll just ask them what are their desired business outcomes, then we'll tailor a plan and we'll achieve it and everybody's going to be happy. Yeah, they're going to be happy. But look, if you think about your own world, you know, you're thinking about getting a customer success software, you already have one. There's, there's certain things that you know that a customer success platform should do for you you know, maybe map the customer journey or track the customer health score. But there's some things that you know that you don't know. So for example, if you've never designed a customer health score, you kind of know that you don't know how to do it. And you may ask the vendor to say, hey, you know, we're thinking about doing this. Can you give us best practices? But there will be some things that your clients don't know that you can do, don't know that you can solve. And so there could be many, many modules and features that you have added over time to your roadmap and they are now available to your clients and they don't have time by the way to go through all your new releases and all the videos you released about your new releases and new features it is your responsibility to talk about what else you can do for them and show them a list of use cases that they may or may not think about given their business model Understood. Thank you for that. So, um, Eric, when you take a step back and see an organization as a whole, um, there are many different departments and teams customers interact with. So, keeping this in mind, what are some of the skills and qualities that are key to helping customers succeed? Um, what are the characteristics of a great customer success professional? Okay, so there's a ton of blogs of people that are smarter than me and more experienced than me that should be answering this question. But in my world, thinking about my own experience, what I've seen like the best superstars of customer success, uh, the kings of the world, um, first of all, all of them have a great sense of conviction and they're very, very driven. And I think that the, I like the most about successful customer success managers is that they're inquisitive. They know how to ask question and they know how to answer a question in another question, an open-ended question. So they create these elaborate discussions with customers to really understand what matters to them. And then I see the kind of like world of customer success managers split into two. They're either a subject, expert, um, sub subject matter expert on their industry or specific process and that's why they do very well because they become a trusted advisor fairly quickly. Or sometimes they have um, the technical experience with the solution. So they used to be a customer or they just came from the professional services world, but they have this aptitude to also be a business consultant. They understand the world of your client regardless of, of everything. And they, they really come from the technical world, but they totally get it. So, you know, when you're thinking about hiring a customer success manager or you're thinking about becoming one, as you go to interviews, think about these last two bullet points. Where do you, where do you fit the most? So as you're talking, th this is your selling point and selling yourself to the organization on where you're interviewing customer, a, a customer success manager. They don't have one of those last bullet points. I would say there's a really big gap that they need to overcome in order to be super effective with your customer success initiatives and goals. Thank you, Glenn. So we're open for questions from the audience. Um, we have a few questions right now, as well. So 
we could get to the first one in the meantime. Uh, anyone with any questions for Eric, please feel free to send them our way. So um, one of the questions we have here is um, how important is it to capture each interaction a business has with its customer? How important it is to capture each and every single interaction. I mean, some interactions are important, some interactions are less important, but overall, the more information you have about your customer is great. I think there's some interactions and touch points that are extremely important to capture and, and are also extremely valid to capture in real time, um, especially if you have a team in place that can react to it in real time as well. The more you know about the various touch points that your customer has uh, with you or other teams, the more tailored the experience you can provide to that user or account. And so in that respect, you know, when we think about customer success, there's this uh, formula that Gainsight talks about, and I believe maybe Lincoln uh, also talks about it quite a bit, which mm -hmm. is the combination of customer experience and the value that you can deliver for them. And so by capturing the touch points, you can deliver a better customer experience because you can tailor the suggested value that you can offer them. So um, there's another question we have over here. It is, um, how do you recommend measuring success? Is it money? Is it customer satisfaction, NPS score? How would you recommend it be done? Hey, sorry, can you repeat the question? How can I yeah, so How do you recommend measuring success? Oh, yeah, you know, we, we, we talked about it in the previous slide. I, it, I would recommend following those metrics. And if that still doesn't uh, work, let me know. I, you know, we can work, work through this. Okay, we have another question coming in. Um, how can a customer success role be most effective in a very small team, uh, three to four people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it, I, there's a lot of, of organizations that have very small teams. I think what, what Catherine Mays is alluding to here is that there's a, it's a very small team, but there's a lot of accounts. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, if there's five customers and you have three, four people, there's really no issue. You can be very effective. So I would say always take a look at your customer success managers ratio. Does it make sense? Like I said, if the accounts are very big or you have very small number of accounts, like say 50, and um, then every, and you're still a small startup, then this is very, very important to have a high touch or even a white glove kind of experience. Um, mm -hmm. So how can it be effective with a very small team and a lot of customers? You need to try a different model. We call it a, a portfolio success role. Um, so let's say in the worst case scenario, you have 5,000 customers and three to four people, you need to change the way your customer journey is defined, your life cycle playbooks are defined, what does the customer success manager should do, when should they have a personal touch point and where shouldn't they? So that's a whole methodology that I recommend working with a consultant or you know, with CSM practice on to develop so that your team can be effective. Go ahead, thank you for that. So since we're almost out of time, uh, can't get take all the questions right now. Uh, if there are any more questions, uh, please feel free to continue the conversation on Twitter at Kayako, that's our Twitter handle, and or free, uh, visit our website, www.kayako.com. Yeah, and if you have any questions or you want to work on your customer success strategy, we help customer success teams scale through customer success programs, uh, through data-driven playbooks, uh, if you have any questions about anything that I said during this webinar, feel free to uh, post a Twitter uh, at CSN Practice or to me directly at Irid Ezips. I'd love to continue the conversation. Uh, additional resources are also, go to our website. We have a, a blog that we post over time. We have a YouTube channel. Uh, just search for YouTube CSN Practice. You'll see many uh, videos that we have uh, offered available for you to learn more about customer success in general. And I just wish you all a great success and a wonderful customer success career and success with your customers. So thank you so much for that. I'd like to close by touching on uh, how Kayako is built to address many of the challenges highlighted in today's session. 
every conversation your team has with a customer is just one part of that customer's journey with your company. And in order to provide the best service and overall experience possible, your team needs to know of all the interactions your business has with its customers. Context uh, and understanding of what a customer has experienced or been through makes all the difference. And Kayako puts that information uh, at, at your fingertips. So, then this concludes uh, today's webinar. Uh, thank you everyone for taking the time to be with us. And uh, Eric, thank you once again for sharing your knowledge. It's been wonderful having you with us today. Um, for our audience, uh, know that our next webinar will be in the beginning of December. Uh, uh, we're still finalizing dates. We'll let you know when, when, that's, uh, when that's scheduled. Um, email us at success.kayaka.com. Send us your feedback. Tell us what you think. Uh, if you're not following us on social media, connect with us at Kayaka on Twitter. We'll be happy to answer any questions we were able to get to in today's session. Uh, we will be sharing the recording of this webinar and, and the slides in our follow-up email. Our uh, email will also have an invitation to a one-on-one -on -one session with a product specialist. Um, you'll be invited to share your customer journey use case, and our specialist will demonstrate how Kayako can capture the entire journey and every interaction your customer has with your business uh, along the way. Uh, once again, thank you all for attending and have a great day. Goodbye.